Ag Group. Today we're out here in the desert of West Texas to do some snake trapping. We're going to be using these G's crawled out of minute traps. If you haven't checked out some of the other videos on our channel, you probably don't realize just how versatile and useful these traps can be. Now normally we're throwing these out in the water, catching crawdads, minnows, fish, lots of aquatic creatures. But over the course of the next week, week and a quarter, we're going to be putting them out on land uh, out here in the desert to try and capture, namely, snakes. But all kinds of lizards, maybe a few mammals, and insects often find their ways inside these traps as well. We'll check them several times a day, see what we catch. I'll give you all the ins and outs. The idea back here right now is that we're around a desert community out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, over the course of the last two weeks, the neighborhood kids have come across a lot of rattlesnakes, a lot of close calls. So what we're going to be doing is taking the rattlesnakes that we capture, hopefully if we get some, and relocating them. Uh, any of the other creatures we'll take a good look at, uh, we'll be releasing. There's a lot of snakes out there that we really, really want to have around the area. They eat all the rats, they take care of it. It's part of a balanced ecosystem, but any of the creatures that don't play nicely with humans, we'll take them somewhere else. But uh, a little bit of discovery, we'll be helping people out around the community, and y'all get to see what it's all about. So let's go ahead and get started. guys and check this out that right there that's a gecko we're over here checking on the snake traps and he wasn't in the trap but he was off close now that is not the typical type that I usually pick up so if y'all know what he is tell me but we'll go ahead and let him go if you're finding geckos all the things that snakes do eat in the area that you're trapping it's probably not too far of a stretch to say that pretty soon a snake, things that eat these guys be along as well. We got something in this trap. It's surprising we don't catch more of these. Because they're all over out here. Check that out. Little eight-legged friends. A lot of folks don't like tarantulas, but they're one of my favorite creatures to find out here. If you're surviving, they are edible, but otherwise, they mean us no harm at all. They're just awesome to have around. And they'll just do their thing. Eat insects. If you got lights out, a lot of times you'll see them out hunting insects in the light. Check them out. It's always good to have them. Go ahead and see if he'll come out for me. Yeah, he did. So, there you go. Real simple, pretty easy, as long as you're not agitating them, bothering them, harassing them. They're usually good to go. So, don't freak out. Here's a rock. There you go. It's more natural than my skin. And he'll go back to his burrow. Around. Go ahead. 
without the gloves, because I'm that kind of fool. Let this guy go. He can continue doing his thing wherever he needs to. So, while we use these traps, see it go. There we go. A lot of these guys will actually come back on me and try and strike me, attack me, chase me. Go ahead, let him go. Now, it might seem like watching these videos that we catch a whole lot of snakes, a whole bunch of creatures in a relatively short amount of time. That's usually not the case. It can take days and days to catch anything at all. But out here in West Texas, take a look at what we have here in the trap. We've been catching a whole lot of these. These are called stink bugs. Now they're all over the place. They walk around all over the ground day and night with impunity. And that's because they smell bad. If you agitate them, they throw their butt up in the air and they emit this nasty, nasty odor. So, not catching snakes, not catching too many things, but traps and traps full of stink bugs. Fun, fun. This trap is not where I left it, and usually it's the wind that blows it over. But this time we've caught something. Pretty big something. It's not a snake, but if there's as many of these things running around as we've seen here lately, there's probably going to be plenty of snakes next season, because all this stuff is snake food. So check this guy out. Big, ugly rodent. Now, these are really smart. Uh, normally, they're just the right size where they can go into the funnel, jump in the trap, get what they want, and then jump back out. But every once in a while, I come across a species or a rat or a mouse that's just the wrong size where they can force their way in, but they can't force their way back out the funnel. He knows where it's at. He just can't make his way back through it. So a few stink bugs inside there. When it comes down to releasing rodents, again, this is up to the property owners. Again, any kind of creature that's going to spread disease or cause property damage, um, we go ahead and we ask them. Even if I were to open this trap right now and release this guy, I'd have to hold Huck, the dog. He's really good with wildlife. He loves the creatures out and about, but there's no love lost when it comes to a rat. And he'll tear after it and usually he'll win that fight. So something to think about. At least we're catching something. Just not a whole lot of snakes. We'll see about next season. Alright guys, so our trap last night, we caught something. Now this is not a snake, but it is long and it is venomous. So check this guy out. Now most folks never get to see these. For one, they only live out here in the desert. And secondly, they're nocturnal, but that is the largest centipede in all of North America. The red-headed centipede, out here we call them desert centipedes. Now he can't really kill me, but he can make me hurt. Uh, he can make me regret my life choices for a while if he were to bite me. Now, his fangs have venom inside of them, and it's going to feel like the worst wasp or bee sting you've ever had for quite some time. He's a true carnivore. He eats all kinds of mice, all kinds of lizards whatever he can really get a hold of, but he doesn't want to eat humans. So we're gonna go ahead and let him go. Put my gloves on, because out of all the creatures you probably see me pick up, snakes and scorpions, a centipede's just one of those things that I don't mess with. And I don't feel like screaming on film today. So we're gonna release him back into the environment, let him do his thing, because he's a friend out here. He's going to eat all the things we don't want around. He doesn't cause any kind of damage. He's just going to go and live his life. Let's see if we can't get some close-ups. Show you what he's all about. He might be trying to get my hand right there. He's not happy. Check him out. That is a beautiful, beautiful creature. Not really a danger to us. Not normally. Not out when humans are out. And we're not on the menu. 
But you should disappear up onto those rocks fairly quickly. And that's that. Real simple. So check this out guys. It's a pretty cool find. Here in my hand, that is a baby horny toad. And we see these every once in a while. If they're on the ground, if they don't move, they're really hard to spot. Got some really good camouflage. There's quite a few species out here in West Texas. But this is a true desert denzian. Go ahead and put him down. Show you why he's so good at camouflaging. Once he stops moving, he blends in with that rock really well. Now, a lot of his cousins are very spiny, very pokey, and that's what they use to defend themselves. Uh, this guy, the species, is a lot softer, but he's that much better at camouflaging and looking like a rock. Pretty cool find. Let him go back to doing what he does, eating ants. Out. More rats. It's not what I choose to catch. More stink bugs. Always more stink bugs. All right, guys. So check out what we have here in the trap. Now they're fairly small. And that's not what we intended on catching. There are three little mice there. These are the things that are eaten by the snakes that we're actually after. But this should reemphasize how useful and versatile these G's crawdad and minitraps are. They catch all sorts of things. This is without bait. We simply put this trap down on a trail along a wall, places where creatures move. Now when it comes down to these humane traps, we use these so that we have an option. To release the creature, all the good snakes, all the good insects, we let those go. Any kind of venomous snakes, we'll relocate. When it comes down to these mice, this is a hard one. We're gonna go ahead and ask the property owners, it'll be up to them. Uh, creatures that spread disease, uh, creatures that cause property damage, uh, it's gonna be their call on those. But again, this is why we use these humane traps. Now, trapping responsibly, this is what it comes down to. Check these traps several times a day. Don't place them in the sun. Don't place them around ants. Make sure that whatever creature gets inside of there is not gonna be harmed or go through any kind of suffering. When you're done trapping, make sure you break these open, nest them, fold them together. Make sure that they're not trapping indiscriminately and causing things to die. Now, they run out of water, things get inside of here, if you leave this thing unattended for extended periods of time, creatures will find their way in and they will die. So make sure you put these things up. Guys, we're all about trapping, but do it the right way. Group, go ahead and end this video off showing you this little guy. And this is a bark scorpion right here. Now he's full grown. Uh, there are scorpions in the world that can put you in the hospital, uh, several of which can possibly take your life. But this one right here, unless I have an allergic reaction, poses me little threat. Uh, it'll give me a headache, a little bit of dry mouth over the course of a few hours, and uh, about the pain of a wasp. But this is one of those things we live with out here in the desert. Now they don't really mean us any harm. They eat insects, they do their thing, but we're not on their diet. So if you can, leave them alone. If you can't, try and relocate them. Know your insects before you mess with them. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be out in the desert once more here in a few weeks for more adventure and to find some more creatures out there. So like, subscribe, comment. Tell us what you think about it. Support your local scouts. And as always, till next time.